Let's talk about ghosts. So okay. I, I, I'm, uh, I don't believe in ghosts necessarily. I believe in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. I was raised a Christian. I believe that we're, that there is a higher power. I also am a business owner and I'm, I, I come from a very brutal background, but I'm very analyst. So I'm very analytical. I, mm -hmm. I believe what I see right in front of me. Okay. Uh, and my business training, you know, my brain is very, I'm not very colorful. I'm not very artistic. I'm very analytical. Having said that, and so that's kind of my take on, I don't believe what I can't see. And I'm sure that comes along all the time, uh, that mm -hmm. you hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. But I know somebody that when they were a kid, uh, they were raped. This is a, a friend of my male friend. Wow. And he was hung on a, and th the whole point of this conversation, I guess, has got to get dark to figure out, <laughs> I mean, it seems like these are the places you go. And so I think this story is reflective of kind of the question that I have coming or the mm -hmm. question you can answer. And he went back to the house where it happened. He was hung on a coat rack when he was very little by uh, a, a male friend of the parents. And, uh, and this is years later, and he went back and he knocked on the door. And the family that lived in this house 30, 35 years later uh, was an engineer and a nurse. Uh, mm -hmm. And he said, told him who he was. He'd grown up in the house and he'd just like to go through the house, not what had happened. And he goes in and he heads downstairs and the wife, and he goes to open the door. It was in a little room in a garage from what I understand. And he goes to open the door to the garage from the house. And the wife says, Oh no, no, you don't want to go out there. And the husband says, she never goes out there. Mm -hmm. she, and she's like, something's the matter out there. We don't, I don't go out there. The husband had no problem doing it, okay. but the wife was like, no. And he, of course he wouldn't tell them and it's their house. Right. And you, but he was just there to relive his childhood mm -hmm. uh, memories as far as they were concerned. But that freaked the hell out of him. Um, and, and, and I mean, it freaked him out to this day that mm -hmm. that happened and that she didn't want. And then they wrote him a, a, an email afterwards about what were you really doing here? And my wife won't go in that room. So mm -hmm. I have, you know, anecdotal evidence to some extent. It's hard to argue that, you mm -hmm. know, that, that that really happened. But then mm -hmm. again, I only believe what I see in front of me. So kind of respond to that, if you would, what your thoughts are on you know, I like to see what I have in front of me, but at the same time, I can't discount the stories that I know happen. Absolutely. And, and you know, that, that's an amazing story. And, and those are the stories that we really look for in the locations that we go to. And as you as you read in the bio, all of us come from a very scientific background. So the first thing that we do is we go in with a healthy skepticism of, you know, we want to investigate this and we believe that there's possibility of paranormal activity that, that happens at this location, but we want to rule out everything else first. So we go in first on a day tour and we look for everything. We look for street lights outside. We look for traffic. Where are the traffic patterns? What is the air traffic pattern? What is, uh, you know, are there are any trains nearby, dogs nearby, and we get a sense of the location in the daylight. And we make, we make notes. Okay. So if we hear something um, like a train or something that we can't, that we can account for during the night, then we can rule that out. So we take very copious notes on everything that we do. And we go in with a very scientific mindset. And then when we go into the investigation the night of, we set up equipment, uh, we set up night vision video cameras, we set up voice recorders, um, and we leave those in, in places around the, the location. So um, in, in, when we go into Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, for example, we have numerous cells or cell blocks where we have cameras running and they run un, unattended throughout the night. And uh, so we can account, and then we all wear body cameras, so we can account where everybody is on the campus of the location throughout the entire investigation. So we are very meticulous about making sure that what we present as evidence is to us unexplainable. So for example, if I'm in a location and I know that there's only four other females with me and we capture a child's voice, I can't explain that. Or we capture a male's voice, I can't explain that. So for example, we were at um, the Exchange Hotel in Gordonsville, Virginia, and this was a hotel that was that was built in the early 1800s, and it became a field hospital during the Civil War. So there are numerous reports of, of hauntings in this location. And so we were there. There were five of us women. We're the only ones on the property. And uh, we left a voice recorder in one of the rooms. And when we were not on that floor at all, we captured a male voice saying, I don't know, I'll be back at 430. And it is crystal clear. It sounds like an elderly gentleman. Again, I cannot explain that. And then two hours later, on that same voice recorder, we got a child's voice saying, hi, this is my bed, which to me would account for something that we would call intelligent, 
because I feel that it was speaking to the voice recorder. So those are the things that I can't explain. If, if we're going through all of our evidence or our footage and we're listening to audio and video or watching video footage and it's stuff that I can account for, obviously I'm throwing that out as something unexplainable. But what I'm putting forth in the videos are those things that in this moment I have no explanation for. And I'm not going to tell you that it's paranormal. I'm not going to tell you that it's haunted. And I'm not going to try to convince you what I'm saying is correct. What I'm saying, well, all I'm doing is building a case that says at this, on um, this night, under these circumstances, with these cameras and these people, this is what I found that I can't explain. And then let the audience decide for themselves what they want to believe and what they don't want to believe. 